Let's talk about element 115. This is the magical uh, element that Bob said was used to power these uh, flying saucers. John, um, give me your take on 115. I know that uh, there, there's a story that Bob stole some from S4 and brought it home, which is an incorrect assumption on the part of uh, a lot of people. But you got to see this stuff and, and what it could do in a fairly interesting experiment involving a cloud chamber, right? Yeah, we took a regular bell jar and some dry ice, and we put the um, uh, the element 115. It was in the little – we, we didn't steal it. it. Somebody gave it to him from uh, Los Alamos, and we put out the story that he stole it so we wouldn't implicate the guy that gave us from – gave it to us from uh, Los Alamos. John, wasn't that code name like LA-1000 or something like that? Yeah, something like that. Anyway, put the, uh, well, the 115 on the dry ice, and then we hung, uh, hung the um, Coleman Lantern Mantle, which uh, has thorium in it. And uh, the, the, uh, the, the gist of the experiment, the, uh, the reason we did that was to see the attractive properties of 115. Could it deflect the alpha particles coming uh, being emitted? From the thorium emitter, uh, and uh, and it did. We videotaped it, and uh, the cloud chamber, you know, the, the dry ice made the uh, the cloud so that we could see the particles and what direction they're going. And of course, they're going straight out at a million miles an hour, and uh, there's nothing that should deflect them. But in fact, the uh, uh, the particles, uh, at least one of them, was deflected, and we caught that on videotape. Now the question is, where is the videotape? Now, <laughs> I know that Bob oh. has. A copy, and uh, you had a copy, and it's like many things in this stuff. They just seem to disappear. All the really hard evidence disappears. John, well, I've got it somewhere. I, I just don't know where it is in this big one, pile of stuff. Was the 115 still inside of that clamshell holder during this experiment? The little lead thing that we that yeah. Bob made. Yeah. Well, he took it out of there. No, there no, there was a, a clam shell that it actually came in because it had to be kept under neutron bombardment when it was at rest. I mean, it, it was a it wasn't just a little thing that Bob made. Remember, well, I, the, well there was a lead container that Bob kept the uh, the one fifteen. I don't know about the clam shell thing, yeah. but the, there was a clam shell thing with whatever whatever neutron emitter. Uh, on the inside of it, I don't know. What, you know, I'm not a scientist. I don't know what I'm talking about. But I know the 115 had to be kept under neutron bombardment at rest for whatever reason, and and there was a casing that it came in. I mean, I don't know that that's the same one you're talking about. I, I didn't. Wondering. I didn't see the casing. Okay. I just saw the little arrowhead shape. Okay. That put on the dry ice, and there was me, Joe, Van, and Eddie, right. and Bob, and uh, Bob, and I think Jim Taliani was there. Gene, did you ever see 115 out of the case? No, not out of the case. Um, I thought you, case, you've, you've heard the stories about well, – I'll tell you what, we'll, we'll hold this till after the break. But I want to go into the stories about uh, 115 because it's now a real element. It wasn't back then. It came out of the sky, an appropriate uh, song for this time period. We'll be back with more of Gene Huff and John Lear and maybe a call from Bob Lazar. We still have our fingers crossed. I'm George Knapp. This is Coast to Coast AM. Welcome back to Coast to Coast. My name is George Knapp. We're talking with John Lear and Gene Huff about the Area 51 story, the Bob Lazar story, and a, a key factor in that story is the, sto is the information about something called Element 115. I as I mentioned uh, before that break, uh, I had first been told about it and said, uh, well, it doesn't exist, Bob, and he comes back and says, well, it's theorized that there is an island of stability, that, uh, that something like this could exist, and, and of course now... It has been created in a lab, but it's uh, it only lasted for a couple of seconds. Gene, how do you reconcile Bob's uh, version of what 115 is like, stable, 500 pounds of this stuff, with uh, the reality of what scientists have found? Found. Well, I'm not, but I'm much of a judge. I mean, from a layman's point of view, first of all, remember, 500 pounds isn't a, a room full. This is a, a, a an element heavier than lead, so 500 pounds isn't. <laughs> You know, it isn't as much as one would surmise. And um, uh, all I know about it is it had to it, it had to be – it wasn't just 115. I believe it was an isotope of 115. And it, I remember it had to be kept under neutron bombardment at rest because it would be inside this reactor in the disk. It would be uh, – they'd actually bombard it with a, a – I think a proton, wasn't it, John, that was sent down a, a tuned tube uh, of, uh, to, uh, uh, to actually plug into the nucleus of the 115, which would then uh, – Bump it up 
to 116. Well, yeah, make it 116, and 116. then it would fission off some particles, some of which were antimatter, and this antimatter would be reacted with matter, and uh, then the heat from that reaction would be converted to electricity, and this is how the disk was powered. So that's the basic, <laughs> that's the basic story of 115. And in, in, uh, even back then in Van Nostrand's uh, scientific encyclopedia, I think it was the... Um, the lab for heavy ion research or something like that at Darmstadt, Germany, had done some research, and, and they were sneaking up on 115 but hadn't created it. And, and since then, uh, they, yes, they have created some 115 in a lab, but if you, if you actually examine how they do some of these experiments, I mean, they'll bombard this and bombard that and move particles at a significant percentage of the speed of light and then use this filter or that filter and, 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 so it had to exist and then exist for X amount of seconds or fractions of seconds, and then it decays. So no one had enough of it, a quantity of it, that they could actually study it and do anything with it, even though they have not only found that it, it does exist, it's not just a theory, there, there is an island of stability there, but they, what they found is that it, uh, it decays rapidly. But again, the 115 Bob worked with wasn't just 115 like hydrogen is hydrogen. It was an isotope, and there were special properties involved with it, including how you had to keep it when it, when it wasn't in action. I remember uh, during that tumultuous period when Bob thought uh, maybe his life was in danger, going to his house one night, and he had the 115 in, in that uh, lead casing sort of uh, with a bullseye on it in front of his uh, particle accelerator. Right. Uh, uh, so the, uh, what was he doing there? Well, I guess the threat was that he would uh, accelerate particles down and plug in a proton into the, into the uh, one of the, uh, I don't know if he would have been able to achieve the speed or the power to do that, but I doubt that somebody at the OFI would know whether he had that capability or not. And I guess it was a threat to cause an antimatter reaction. Explosion. I Meaning guess. if they were going to take him out, he was going to take them out. Everybody was going at the same time, right. John, uh, you, you buy the stuff, the story on 115 based on what you saw with that cloud chamber experiment. Yeah, and uh, the fact is the, uh, uh, the 115 uh, was stable. There is an island of stability up there, but 116 is not. And what they were doing is bumping the 115 up to 116 by... Uh, injecting protons into it, and what it would do is when it got to 116, it would immediately decay. And uh, and what would happen is it, during the decay, it would throw off antimatter, which was mixed with matter to create heat, to create power for the uh, 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 for the ship. And the other was they could access the gravity A wave, uh, and the gravity A wave they used to uh, access and amplify, amplify it to pull space towards them to go hundreds of light years you know, in a very short second. But um, naturally occurring element with 15 cannot uh, be found uh, anywhere near us. It can only be found in a solar system much larger, is the way Bob explained it. Uh, the, the two main factors which determine the residual matter that remain after the creation uh, of a solar system is the amount of electromagnetic energy and the amount of mass present at the time of the creation of that solar system. A much larger solar system than the one Earth is in would have to have been created to have element uh, 115 occurring as a natural element. So, no, there's no possibility that uh, uh, it's here or it could be mined here, which some people have said, uh, and there's no possibility that they could actually make it. It would take years and years and years of, of uh, pumping uh, protons and years of electromagnetic energy to, to make the element 115 that, uh, that Bob had. There's, there's a... There's a story that uh, of something that happened that hasn't really been told that you guys have not discussed in public, but at one point, uh, this uh, piece that, that Bob had was stolen, wasn't it? There was three, and two were, two were stolen. Bear me out on this, Gene, and then, uh, and then uh, one we have no comment on. <laughs> Gene, uh, the, the, who's, who stole it? Who stole this like, the, the piece? You know, I just have a vague memory of that. I don't remember who did steal that, John. You know... I remember like trying to know. cut a deal to recover <laughs> it, and uh, actually Bob Bigelow was actually involved in that. But I don't want to. I just, I don't remember 
uh, I don't don't remember who the guy was that took it or how he got access to it. By the way, with all that stuff John rattled off there with gravity A waves and blah, 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 we, before you take callers from the public, we know that Earth scientists do not agree that gravity is a wave, and we know that there be, should be so much waste heat from an antimatter reaction and a little reactor inside of a flying disk that everything would melt, and, and, and we understand that. I mean, we're not... We're not uh, scientists, and, and we can't answer those questions as where did all the waste heat go and, our, and the arguments about gravity being a wave, just for the record. <laughs> okay. Well, I remember that there was uh, that uh, one of the pieces was stolen, and I thought it was like a neighbor or a friend or a hanger-on who was uh, uh, at the house and was interested in all the UFO stuff who right. took it, and somehow you got it back. But, uh, and yeah, then, and uh, I just don't remember his name or how that came about because I, I you know, I remember Bob was real upset that it happened, and we had to try and cut a deal to get it back and go meet with a guy. We were setting a meeting out at the the old Las Vegas Speedway, not the new one, the old one over in northeast part of town there, and all of that. And and uh, and I don't want to start. I don't remember the names and and how okay. it happened. So, um, what happened to the piece? I mean, you know, uh, you know what happened to it. Can you can you say how much can you say? Well, you know, it was you know he buried it at a place. Where, <laughs> where it would be hard for anybody to get well, it. it would be hard to to get and uh, and the, but it would be secure at that uh, at that location for a long time and would be obvious if it's if it's uh, if it's containment was ever jeopardized so basically you know uh it's known it's known where that uh, that that piece is yeah yeah uh speaking of elements By the way, uh, it's not it's not it's not like I could drive there and go pick it up right. or, or I would right uh, speaking of strange elements, the element polonium surfaces later, much later in the Bob Lazar story. Uh, of course, after this UFO stuff, Bob tries to leave all of it behind, doesn't want to talk about it anymore, starts up a scientific supply business online, United Nuclear, and, and sells all kinds of weird stuff to...